think the real secret to success is just deciding that you are successful. It's your host with the most, Mr. Meyer with the fire, here to share ideas and take the collective vibration higher. My sole intention is to reconcile all paradox with love and truth. I love you. And this is Mars Day with Mark number 35. So this is your week's astrology forecast for February 6th until the 13th. So if you enjoy this video at any point, please leave a like. I hope you do enjoy. Today, we're starting with the sun at 17 degrees of Aquarius. So winter is in full effect. If you're in the northern part of the world, we're in the middle of winter. So if you are an Aquarius, represent even better. Let me know in the comments below. This is the season of independence in the group, which sounds like a paradox, quite literally. But Aquarius is about leadership, simply. So take pride in your leadership abilities. Take actions that inspire other people. See yourself as a little bit beyond yourself and you'll be able to feel more happy, fulfilled and successful. At the end of the week, the sun is going to be at 24 degrees of Aquarius. So we're in the last couple weeks of Aquarius. And I want to say if it is winter in your hemisphere, you might be feeling that sad, that seasonal affective disorder. So it's important to get as much sunlight or vitamin D as you can and definitely take action, move your energy around so you can stay happy and vibrant and optimistic. Very important. And while it's great to know who you are deep and through and through, you got to have friends, man. So Aquarius does speak about the associates that we have and who are we surrounding ourselves with? And is this helping us build or is this taking you away from your center? Good friends will call you out on your shit. Good friends will push you forward. Good friends will encourage you when it comes to your goals. And quite honestly, great relationships require shared interests shared targets, shared values. And under that logic, y'all can build together, grow together, learn together, because you share a common objective. So definitely something to think about. This week, the moon is mooning. So let me tell you about it. This is the best part. So right now the moon is in Capricorn and we're in a waning moon phase. So we had our full moon in Leo last. That means we're heading up to the new moon in Aquarius on Friday. And after the new moon in Aquarius, we'll start waxing. So if you're watching the video the day I'm posting it, my friend, you'll see the moon losing light and it's getting smaller and smaller in the sky. Come Friday, you won't even see the moon. It'll be completely dark. But Friday is our new moon in Aquarius. So let the first part of the week be centered on release. Releasing what? Character liabilities, the ways that you show up, the actions you take or the identity that doesn't serve your growth anymore. Let that shit go. Let go of fear, let go of ego, let go of small mindedness, let go of bad posture, let go of negative thinking, let go of fear. Did I say that already? Let go of it twice. <laughs> There's a lot of things to let go of, man. Let go of the fear of other people because that makes it difficult to interact with the world. Let's welcome in more trust. Let's welcome in more positivity. Let's welcome in good things. I don't really have all the answers for you, gang. So the point to ask yourself, what do I need to release? In what ways am I holding myself back? That's the question that you have to ask. And quite literally, you have to want to know the answer. You can't just mouth the words or vocalize this. You have to have the intention to, to get the answer, figure it out. There's a big difference. So start there. This Aquarius new moon is different. And I'm really excited to tell you guys about this because on Friday, the lunar cycle begins anew. And what that means is the sun and moon will conjoin in the sky based on the geocentric perspective. That's when a seed is planted. Our rhythm, our cycle starts once again. So whatever we bring into being during this new moon cycle will continue to grow, germinate, and flourish later on in the cycle. So it's very important that you be mindful of your energy around the new moon because this is the time for manifestation and new beginnings. So you can get exactly what you want from life just because you think about it and you feel that way. The universe is responding to your vibration, to your thoughts, to your frequency, to your emotions. So contrary, you can also receive exactly what the fuck you don't want just by paying too much attention to it. Okay? 
So it's vitally important that you ask yourself, what is it that I want from life? Aquarius on some level rules the future. There's two homes of Saturn. We've got the feminine home, which is Capricorn. That's the past, the precedent, how the world is. And Aquarius is the masculine home of Saturn, which talks about pushing out towards the future, our hopes, our wishes, dreams even. So, hey, man, your future always has to be bigger than your past or else there's no reason to go. So be hopeful, optimistic and wish for a better future and do your best to see it come new moon cycle. It's the new moon. So once again, it's the beginning. You don't have to have your whole cycle mapped out or even your whole life mapped out, but it would be wise to really get a picture or a symbol or an idea of what it is that you desire for this new cycle so that you can let your energy move towards that. Moon lunations, like full moon, new moon, even quarters, these are great times to do magic if you are so inclined. And if that is you, I would encourage you to do some form of ritual or even maybe compose a sigil take your affirmation your phrase your desire and encode it into a picture so you can look at this and send energy to your intention even when you don't see physical ways to apply yourself towards the goal just by having this is a great way to program your environment with magic so sigils are something to think about signs and symbols so on top of that i want y'all to know that the moon and the sun which are conjoining at 20 degrees of aquarius are going to be square uranus and taurus it's about a 90 degree angle and this means big changes are coming and expect the unexpected which is quite literally impossible so do your best to really understand the basics of freedom and the mechanics of your human body and mind and how you can make change or how you can thrive in chaos This really feels like the great unknown where the only way to really predict the future is to actually create it for ourselves. So wish in one hand, crap in the other hand, which one will fill up first? Probably the crap, if I'm just being honest. You feel what I'm saying? So the point is, what actions are you gonna take to ensure that your life is different? How are you gonna put yourself in a position where you can't fail? How can you blaze your own trail? And don't be looking to other people for the answer. You know, these are questions for self. How can you inspire? How can you lead? And if this is about your friends, about your family, your close people in your life, your moon, how can you mobilize your associates? How can you give direction to others? How can you inspire the world? How can you change this world? And in my heart, I wanna say that Uranus and Taurus, which is a pretty long shift, seven years, it also reflects us coming up with new ways to make money in our personal lives. It's a huge global shift of values, but personally, that'll talk about making money in new ways and freeing your time, freeing your assets, freeing your energy, and not being bound by fear or greed, trust, liberating us. So that's really cool to look into. So after this new moon, and I would also really encourage group ritual in some way, shape or form. On Friday, I am launching Simplified Tarot. So I have a lot of lessons and messages coming out for a lot of you guys. If you've yet to join, I really encourage you to get in the pre-order now, save yourself some money. But that's something I'm doing for the collective, but I just encourage you to go do your magic. If you are a solitary practitioner, you know, maybe focus on leadership. And if not, think about how you can do magic with your friends or how can you collaborate or can you associate with others and become more powerful. So on that note, there is an extended breakdown of this new moon that I'm going to be posting with my friend Heather. So you guys are going to want to tap into the channel pretty soon in the next couple of days to see that. So make sure you're subscribed and it'll come up in your feed. So beyond this new moon, in the change that we're going to make, let me tell you about some of these inner planets and how these other mechanics are working to the sky right now. There are some pretty interesting aspects and I really want to tell you guys about these. So the first one is Mercury and Pluto. So right now, Mercury is at two degrees of Aquarius. And at the end of the week, Mercury will make it to 13 degrees of Aquarius. And this planet is all about our mind, about how we communicate and how we perceive. So you could say this is the intellect and Mercury is an an air sign right now, Aquarius. 
This talks about strong rationality, facts and logic and empirical analysis. So in other words, things are making sense and that's how they're supposed to be. Aquarius Mercury is a pretty great place to have Mercury. So if you are an Aquarius or a Pisces or even uh, certain Capricorns, you may have Mercury in Aquarius and you know that this reflects a very smart person who is really free thinking and independent. And we all might be getting a little taste of that as well, where logic is hitting stronger and the deconditioned mind is shining, meaning information is becoming stripped down to its base components to be tested. On some level, I think Aquarius Mercury really feels like the scientific theory, the scientific method where you, you know, observe and you have a hypothesis and you test and you make conclusions and you have control groups and it's empirical thought. So Mercury and Aquarius is giving us the opportunity to test our ideas and to make sure that they make sense in objective reality because what you'll notice about Mercury and Aquarius people is if they can't attach their ideas to everybody, they filter their ideas out of their awareness and experience. These people want the truth. So if it doesn't apply to everybody, it must not apply to me. You get what I'm saying? So that's how Aquarius Mercury people think. It's a universal lens that they look at life through, which makes them come full circle in every perspective. So that's beautiful. You should also know Pluto's in Aquarius at zero degrees. And at the end of the week, zero degree Pluto is the exact same thing we're going to have. In other words, Pluto's not moving more than a couple astrological minutes. So what that means is by orb, Mercury is separating from Pluto, but you could also say that Mercury is conjunct to Pluto all week. I mean, technically, at the end of the week, that's like a 13 degree orb conjunction, but that's still a conjunction by some people's uh, standards. So today, which is seven days before that 13 degree orb, we're only two degrees away. That's how big the orb is. So either way that goes. Mercury conjunct Pluto is kind of where we left off last fucking time. If you guys watched the last video where it cut off abruptly, that's very Mercury Pluto having your message cut off or having your guide disappear on you or having your phone overheat and then stop working or having your technology be destroyed or having your mind evolve. So there's a lot going on with this Mercury Pluto conjunction going on in the sky right now. This is talking about psychological depth and introspective analysis mapping out your mind is mercury pluto making it make sense and not hiding from your monsters or demons confronting your fucking fears so mercury pluto i mean this is one of the biggest spectrums of possibilities where you have the first planet and then arguably one of the last planets even though those planets pass pluto so this is talking about evolving our perception and where you might feel very empowered mentally or you might be paranoid as fuck right now. So I encourage you to really dive into any feelings that you find and realize it's usually not what you're perceiving, but how you fucking perceive it. That makes a difference. Your eyes are a screen. So how do you know someone's not just going to unplug your TV or you couldn't just walk away from this game at any point? You get what I'm saying? You got to just remember that you are the consciousness. You are not the body. And it's kind of easy to get wrapped up in the environment or the physical. Just remember, you are no thing. So anything you attach to yourself is not truly you. You can take an experience as a human and an ego and get a name. But ultimately, your body is something that you have. It's not something that you are. So just keep that in mind. I don't say this to help anybody bypass existence. I just want you to remember where this comes from. We owe it to ourselves to experience the full depth and breadth and width of being a human, but ultimately a spirit comes first. So that's my point. All is mine. It's not easy to have a mind. Arguably, it's the most difficult thing you could do or the easiest, depending on how you want to look at it. So you have to find freedom through the mind and not freedom from your mind. Your anxiety is telling you something. Depression is telling you something.
it's important to identify as your mind as opposed to feel like your mind is something that you possess so that you don't suffer consequences of what is the word describing limiting or labeling your mind in a certain way and i think this is hitting for some people but to be more clear there's a difference between saying i'm experiencing depression and i am depressed or i have depression or i'm experiencing depression those feel very different and they are very different intellectually speaking when it comes to assumptions and beliefs about reality those are very different my question for you is which one feels more powerful so Mercury Pluto says this week, take full control of your mind at all times. Don't do anything that diminishes your consciousness. The operator is in full control of their mind at all time, in full control of their domain at all times. So just know that. It's very important. This week is beautiful, gang. I wanted to tell you the lovers is a real big theme this week because we have Venus in Capricorn starting at 17 today ending at 26 at the next tuesday and then we've got mars and capricorn at 25 and then at the very end of the week on tuesday moving to zero aquarius so it's really a venus and mars and capricorn week so when when venus and mars can join in the solar system romance becomes a huge factor for life because why this is the feminine and the masculine planet coming together the planet of pleasure and then the planet of desire coming together. You know, needs and then wants. You could say this a lot of ways. Love and passion coming together, basically. So if you are partnered, you're going to see things getting pretty hot and pretty exciting. And if you're not, you know, you may start lusting after connection. And that's pretty cool. Some people... It takes a Venus-Mars conjunction for them to finally start to welcome love into their life or to be motivated by that. For some people living this conjunction in their natal chart, this is a motivating factor when everything else fails to get them moving. You know, so you will see either romance or art being a huge theme this week because we could separate the two of these things. And, and look at them separate than the conjunction but the conjunction simply just says that love and passion is running parallel this week so that's how we're going to get everything we want whether it's our goals met a thing or a person so my advice on that logic is don't get distracted when it comes to your purpose don't let love be a substitute for purpose because a good relationship is two whole people where one plus one equals three if I'm 50 and you're 50, we're only going to equal one. And then we're actually going to be going slower together than by ourselves. And that's fucked up. Once again, a relationship that's great, shared values, vision, and interests. Those three things, values, vision, interests. We can grow together. But if not, let's get out of each other's way because that wouldn't help. So Venus and Capricorn is about valuing stability, valuing legacy reputation even integrity loving honestly or raising our standards rejecting things that don't serve and then mars and capricorn i mean that's going to parallel as you should know but mars talks about our drive being focused and disciplined and organized so it is world domination time man so if you're not trying to conquer the world with me get the fuck out of the way or i might have to like employ you in my kingdom as a lesser role but don't tell me you want to sit on the throne if you're going to twiddle your fucking thumbs and scratch your nuts, dude. It's not about that. It's about action. It's about doing the fucking work. Basically. So, at the end of the week, Mars will ingress into Gregarious on Tuesday, the 13th. And Mars in Aquarius talks about engineering. Mars in Capricorn, more so, on the feminine side of Saturn, is like, how can we maximize our out? our output and even our input but Aquarius talks about doing this on a mental level so we can actually get way more with systems and strategy and innovation so there is going to be an acceleration an upgrade come next week so I will just say it's about finding your rhythm this week painting a picture getting that target finding your rhythm is what I'm seeing because come Friday you know we're going to be in that waxing phase we start 
taking action. We start moving up to the new full, uh, new full moon, okay? So we've got the Venus-Mars conjunction. We got the Mercury-Pluto conjunction. We also have Chiron conjunct the North Node this week, which is also pretty fascinating. I've been telling you guys about this for some months. It's been approaching in here. The fuck it is. So the North Node is our collective destiny. It's our future. And that's a little woo-woo. I'm not going to take the time to explain the physics of this, but this would reflect also what I'm saying is that this is the collective trajectory of the solar system on a linear level. And we can't know where we are going if we don't know where we've been. And what we're releasing is Libra, South Node. We're pushing towards Aries, North Node. So it's really about you. It's about independence, trailblazing, and pioneering. We got to let go of people-pleasing tendencies or vanity or ideals or logic or forms of morality, quote unquote, that hold us back from true authenticity. That shit's gotta go, man. This this weak ass empathy that's really only hurting people by being too sensitive or too politically correct or too fucking nice. That's the shit that has to go, man. This fake fucking caring. Not serving anybody right now. But um, on top of that North Node and Aries, we've got Chiron conjunct Aries, North Node. And Chiron is the asteroid of healing. So I want you guys to know that healing is the focus. Healing is what's required right now. Healing is what you're probably already seeing in your life. Resolving your traumas, you know, licking your wounds, meditating, filling up the chakras, letting go of the pain, releasing resentment, taking account. This is real Aries energy, expanding awareness of self, taking accountability for ourselves, and then growing. And that also means forgiveness for our mistakes, forgiveness for others for their mistakes. If we knew better, we do better. And sometimes we know better, we just make mistakes, man. So forgiveness, raising your frequency, raising your consciousness, seeing yourself as everything, man. Not justifying resentments toward anybody. This Aries energy talks about learning how to use our will, learning how to use our energy constructively. Anger is a very destructive force. Some things have to be destroyed. So you just have to be mindful which one of your desires are separating you from the world and which ones are uniting you with the world. And that's the question to be asking yourself ultimately because you can't pick any you can't pick every shiny object that calls to you you know you have to have some self-control and you have to take responsibility for yourself <clears throat> so pardon me on another level i want to say chiron node looks like healing our connection with ourself healing our identity healing our self-image and more specifically a lot of people are going to be needing to gain skills and tools whether they're going to school and getting a degree or studying some profession or craft or discipline. I see people gaining Reiki attunements. I see people gaining card experience, cardomancy, astrology, people diving deeper into their spiritual science because Chiron at its core is spiritual healing, quite literally. It's all healing, but in the more archetypal form, it's spiritual healing. Also based on the astronomy, you'll see that archetype. One other thing I want to tell you guys, because we've basically covered most of this when it comes to, you know, the, the planet Sun, Moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Pluto. I want to say we have Jupiter and Uranus in Taurus, and this talks about growth. I know that's so damn vague, but Jupiter is teaching us the blessings are in the Earth. Uranus in Taurus says Earth is all we have, and we have to be more efficient with our resources in order for us to become more free and independent at this time. Neptune is in the sign of Pisces, which says our collective dream is to be united and to release all the fuckery. So you have to be able to stand firm, strong, and tall on your spiritual two feet, Saturn and Pisces as well, okay? One more conjunction I want to tell you guys about is that we have Black Moon, Lilith, and Virgo conjunct Juno in Virgo. Black Moon, Lilith is the lunar apogee, meaning the furthest distance the moon could be from Earth. And this reflects the deepest healing people need and the deepest connection and nourishment they need too. And Black Moon, Lilith, and Virgo feels like unmasking wounds of shame, guilt, humiliation, oppression, fear, self-criticism, perfectionism wounds, um, just weird health ailments that are psychosomatic, you know, nervousness, anxiety in general, Lilith Virgo is a lot of things, but I think ultimately the biggest struggle Lilith Virgo kind of deals with is that perfectionism, that that need to serve truly in that feeling like there's always more that needs to be given. This is something that's being addressed collectively at this time where we're 
not only raising our standards for ourselves, but realizing that regardless of how we perform, it's good enough. You know, we do need to have high standards, but ultimately, if you're not good enough for yourself, no amount of effort is going to prove that shit for real. If it's not a decision first, Lilith and Virgo is teaching us there's nothing wrong with us. We have to take accountability and make changes and not blame others or project or deny our experience. When you blame, you give away power. Take responsibility for yourself, but realize at your core, there's nothing wrong with you. Let me tell you, Juno is the asteroid of romance, more specifically. You'll see love in Venus, but if you're looking for like romantic love, partnership, marriage, relationship, you feel me? Like getting booed up, that's Juno, okay? And Juno's in Virgo, which means that the way that we're loving romantically is through Virgo, discriminant, specific, procedural, systematic, logical, empirical, critical. So on top of Venus being in Capricorn, this is saying, say fuck no to everything that doesn't make you feel good, that doesn't bring your health better. And sometimes, you know, things aren't comfortable. Sometimes growth hurts and it might not feel good to, you know, experience conflict. So I don't want to say throw out all the babies with the bathwater when it doesn't feel good because that's irresponsible. To the point where you keep accountability, let go of everything that's interrupting you or your well-being or health. That's what Virgo Venus is about or Virgo Lilith in Juno, I should say. It's about let go of every fucking thing that's beneath your standards. If you're willing to provide that to yourself, you're not asking for too much. You're just asking the wrong people. Know where your boundaries are so people can't violate you, okay? But I'm seeing, I should say, Lilith is moving forward, Juno's retrograde. So they're gonna like smack and make this conjunction and then they'll pass within the last week of uh, February, okay? So I just see with this um, Juno crossing over Lilith, this is gonna mean huge release when it comes to past love cords of attachment exes lovers that you might have had a hard time letting go of this is talking about the energetic release like the tree snapping like it's done if y'all haven't had contact you've been stuck mentally it's like dude this shit is over good luck getting back in my mind because you can't the cord is broken that's kind of what it's going to feel like for a lot of people for some people, because I want to say this is like a mundane astrology part for the whole world. Some of y'all are going to get back with your ex and relearn the same lesson, allegedly learn the same lesson. But either way that goes, take care of yourself, y'all. The only way to reliably predict your future is to motherfucking create it. Remember that and never believe a message that doesn't empower you. So I want to say I hope you enjoyed this video. If you took the time to watch this into this point, leave the comment bananas. Just so people are looking at the comments, they're going to be like, what the fuck is everybody talking about? I'm going to know that you watched the whole video. They're going to be like, what the fuck? But comment bananas somewhere in the comment. I love you guys. Appreciate your time and attention. That's your most valuable resource. If you feel called to take a deeper dive into yourself, join Simplified Tarot. If you're not yet a member. If you're watching this before the new moon on the... Uh, February Friday the 9th you can get the pre-order price if it's on that day or later it's still priceless information I love you guys I'll see you on the flippity flip pretty soon I got more content coming for you guys